Hello and welcome to Tricks of the S Trade channel. Today is the 21st of April 2018. And in today's feature, we're featuring John Boyega. John Boyega is a very popular uh, actor. He's been in a couple of movies. We just call him a him for now. And it happens to be that John Boyega actually hails from the country of Nigeria and Africa. So on this particular edition, we'll be looking at, uh, we're not transvestigating any of the uh, actors that I'm going to be showing you who come from Africa. We're just going to be looking at uh, all these actors uh, just to let you know that they are African. Uh, because this particular edition of uh, Tricks of the S Trade video today is titled John Boyega Africa Special Edition Black Panther Part 1. Uh, we did promise that we would make a video about Black Panther when Black Panther comes out. Uh, but since we can, uh, there's some things that have to factor into Black Panther because um, there are so many things on that movie that we, sh which we need to talk about. And we wanted to start today to uh, talk about some of those stuffs and just lay a foundation so that when the DVD comes out, we're going to talk about a lot of things that people may not be aware of. So why is this particular video titled John Boyega Africa Special Edition? The reason is, is this, um, Africans, um, I want to say, I, I, this, I want to say, use and choose my words very carefully. And I want people to hear me out. If you're an African, that means you're from the continent of Africa, from any of the great countries out there, because there's so many countries in Africa. This particular video is for you. And I want you to understand this, that the albino Vatican that's running the world is bewitching Africans and a lot of people may say what does that mean what's the name or what's the meaning or rather why do I use that word bewitching or the name bewitching uh, when you get a book which is currently out you'll understand what that means it is not what it's commonly used in the common sense of the word on popular media when they say which is a totally different word altogether so why do I say that Africans suffer from bewitching now Africans, I'm not talking about black people, I'm talking about Africans now. Africans are the richest people in the world. A lot of people may say, what? What are you talking about, tricks of the ass trade? You must have lost your damn mind. Well, hear me out first of all, okay? Don't be in a hurry. And we'll explain that as we keep watching uh, this video. Africans are the most confused people in the world and the richest people as well. Why are Africans confused? So that's the question we have to answer at this point in time. The reason why Africans are so confused is because all through their lives, they've been portrayed in popular media, all right, as a country or a continent rather that's going through a lot that's in poverty. The people actually believe that they are poor because of the many agents of the Vatican which is used to run the country of Africa. And uh, in the media, they always are uh, portrayed as being very hungry, very needy, uh, like jungle animals. They come from the jungle because you hear a lot of those terms when they talk about Africans, that Africans come from the jungle, that they've been running around in, uh, you know, in fig leaves and loin clothes, like they show like the African Bushmen down in Zimbabwe or somewhere around there. And they make you believe that that's what Africa is all about. And so Africans have this psyche upon them that they are, you know, very poor, needy. They know nothing. And their history, you know, has been changed. And a lot of Africans believe this. A lot of Africans suffer from a delusion of what they call the albino uh, delusion. Because Africans believe in everything else but themselves. They've been portrayed to believe that the white man, as they call it, is the savior of their uh, continents, the savior of their lives, and the savior of everything else. So it, when anything, when it comes to anything that has to do with a white person, they totally go for it. They believe that there are gods and that uh, they are the ones who can help them out. So they're always looking for hand, handouts and everything else because all through their history, through the popular media, because the uh, to be very, very honest, Africa is was the is the most difficult country to colonize. Even though they've gone through a lot of colonization by the black Europeans and then the albino ones that came after, Africa is still a very difficult terrain to colonize and own. Now, why is the case? Why is it that way? Because one, 
Africans have so many languages. In a country in which you have so many languages, it's, it's, it's difficult to colonize. Because you go to one place like, let's say, you go into the Congo. You, a Congo could be a country as big as, uh, bigger than Brazil, all right? And you find out there's over like maybe like, uh, let's say, uh, up to a thousand language, languages in one place in Congo. So trying to colonize people with very many different languages and tribes becomes a problem because you have to go through the language barrier to be colonize all those people. And they're not always going to be, uh, you know, of the same mindset. So that's always the problem. But Africans have been bewitched. And right now, the route to colonize them is that since they can do it physically, because like we've always told you, in order to control anybody, you have to control the mind. If you can't control the mind, you can't control the body. So in order to colonize Africa right now, uh, the albino elite are going through a different route. And that different route is to always make them believe that they are poor, they are broke, all right, that they are needy, and they don't have anything. And always to make them depend on the Western system of education, which only leads to slavery. What the Western system of education does in Africa is that it takes away the languages. Because when you take away the languages, the people are easy to colonize. So in every country in the world, the reason why it's been so successful is that outside of Africa, the languages of the world are limited. Okay? So... Once you go to a place that has maybe had maybe two or three languages, like in North America, the reason why the North American history has been lost and African-Americans today and oh, sorry, and African-Americans today, oh, sorry, black Americans today are now called African-Americans because they had very few languages. And one of the main uh, languages or, or dialect of languages they spoke across, uh, let's say, uh, North Africa, uh, sorry, uh, uh, across North America and North and uh, South America was the Taino languages. So they had many different dialects. So it was technically uh, so it was one single language. So that's why it was so easy to colonize them and take them over because of that one language and different dialects from that language that they had. But uh, that had also happened in places like <coughs> the Caribbean and, uh, you know, all those small other uh, islands around. But in Africa, there were so many languages. So the language barrier becomes always a problem. So why are Africans so confused? That's some of the questions that we have to answer. And why do I say that they are the richest? Now, to start with the rich part, if you look at the movie called Black Panther, so that's why this particular video is called Black Panther Part 1. If you look at the movie Black Panther, you will notice that the fictitious African society that they uh, brought about in that movie was very, very advanced. I mean, in all the Avengers movies that you have, it's the Black Panther, that movie that had the most advanced society. It was a beautiful society and they looked very rich and wealthy. So why are Africans portrayed as very rich and very wealthy in the movie Black Panther? But in reality, in the media, they show you, you know, villages in Africa suffering from maybe hunger and everything else and dying of starvation like it happened way back in the day uh, when Michael Jackson and some other people decided to create this, uh, is it We Are the World, to try to make, create, or try to get people to give money to give to Africa for the drought crisis and food crisis that was going on. So why is that the case? Why is that in the movie Black Panther, Africans are portrayed as very, very rich and wealthy, okay? But in reality, the media makes, the media makes us believe that they are always poor and the people are very poor. Not very poor, but the people are all made to believe that they are poor and needy. Why is that the case? So here is how we answer that question. Now, because Africa has many languages... Um, that language is saves as a history because Africans are the only people in the world who can trace their lineage back to their great four, great, great, great granddaddies, even 10 years in their generation. Africans are the only people who can do that. Why are Africans able to, able to do that? Because I've known a lot of Africans and I've been around a lot of Africans and I've traveled to the country, uh, the continent of Africa. Sorry, it's not a country, a continent. I just have to keep reminding myself of that. The continent of Africa is that 
if you get into any African village and you um, ask a, a child, let's say you just see a child around and you ask him, who's your daddy? And um, he's going to show you who his parents are. And if you meet those parents and say, oh, where do you come from? They start giving you the stories. I mean, these stories are all in African culture. They start giving you the stories of where they come from. They can trace it down to, uh, you know, their own village and show you the people they are related to. So African is more like a community. They live like a community. So Africans are the only people who do that. Now, the next question is this. Uh, we have to still keep answering on why Africans are the richest. Since Africans can trace their history down to their great forefathers and Africans have a very strong uh, you know, connection with their history and very strong connection with their uh, community and where they come from, all Africans own land. Even though the albino supremacist right now is uh, doing a lot of uh, creating a lot of land use acts around in Africa, which is taking land away from the people and giving it to the state. The people still have a very strong attraction, a very strong connection with the land. So every African has a, a, some sort of property, has a landed property because they can all trace their history down to their great forefathers who own property. And so in a way, the children also own property because they can trace themselves down to the land. And the land is still in their name technically, even though they say it's a property of the state. So remember, the origin of all slavery starts with the lack and ownership of land, which all the countries around the world do uh, have been taken away from them. So in every country around the world, outside of the continents of Africa, they do not own the land. That means they can't trace their history down to their own, like say, where they come from. Because from in Africa, everybody comes from somewhere. So it's not like in many Western countries in which someone's going to say that he uh, he's from some place, but he's actually born there. He's not from there. In Africa, it's a different case. When somebody says he comes from somewhere, he wasn't born there. He's actually his history is right there. If he walks into the community or whatever, they're going to tell him, "Go, this is who your father was." This is who your mother was. This is who your great granddaddy and who we married and all the wives and all the children. So they have that strong sense of community. They know where they're from. So Africans are the richest because they still own the land. The land is still in their name. They can still technically trace it down. So that is why they are the richest. Now, why are Africans made to look very poor? Because all through their history, through the many uh, agents of the albino uh, supremacists in the Vatican today who run the world, Africans have been made to believe that agriculture, which was something that they always thrived on, which is something that, you know, um, you know, the Bible talks about that we should uh, uh, do for our own living. Agriculture that means planting your own crops and rearing your own animals. They've made Africans to believe and everybody else in the world to shy away from agriculture. So even though Africans own the land, they have stopped cultivating the land because in their mentality, they've been taught every day that agriculture is the dirty job. So you do not need it. So they are going after these white collar jobs in which the albino supremacists, which you always hear, uh, you know, the United States talk about that they are creating jobs and making them believe that these jobs will make them rich. So they've shied away from agriculture. The world has been made to just shy away from agriculture altogether. Meanwhile, we haven't even thought about it. Common sense. If you do not know how to grow your own crops and rear your own animals, if the people that you're depending on, like all these great multinational companies which are owned by the Vatican, stop feeding you, how are you going to survive? Every slavery starts with not owning land. And Africans still own the land. They can still trace their history down to the land. So that is why they are the richest in the world. And that is why in the movie Black Panther, they are portrayed as such. And meanwhile, they've been brainwashed and confused to believe that they are actually poor. Because let's say, for example, right now, um, if in the Western world, the great multinational companies decided not to feed you anymore. 
you could not get into any property and start cultivating the land because you do not own it. You have no land ownership. You can't even trace your history to that property. So, but Africans can trace their history down to the property and it's still in their name. It's not sold out. And that's one good thing about them. They don't really sell out the community or, or landed community that they have. So in the Western world, if this great multinational companies decided to say, okay, we're not feeding you guys anymore, all right? Would you have land to grow your own crops and grow your own animals to survive? No, you would not. That means you would have to be a scavenger. But in Africa, if it comes down to that point, and the great multinational companies who are all day who feed them, uh, one of them is called, I think his name is Dengote. He's considered one of the richest men in Africa. He has, uh, he's one of those, uh, you know, Vatican agents that they use to uh, grow the crops and the food in Africa. If he said that Africans would still have land, they would go back to their villages because everybody can trace their history down to their village and they would grow their own land, uh, grow their own crops on their own land and feed themselves and they would still be fine. So you see how the albino supremacist makes us believe in so many fairy tales about Africa. Why is that the case? Because as long as Africans, technically, let's just make you understand this. Technically speaking, we are Africans. We are all Africans. But we can't trace our history back down there because our parents who came from Africa are no longer in there. When you get the book, uh, our book, you we go into fine details and make you understand that. All right. So technically, since Africans, we are technically all Africans and Africans still have their history. And this history will always bring, uh, uh, um, this history will always trace you down to creation if you track the history. So the albino supremacists are interested in making sure that Africans erase their history. Because when their history is gone, the history of creation is all gone. And we can no longer trace our origins down to God Almighty. It's that simple. So the brainwashing and the confusion and the bewitching that they are passing on Africans is at an all-time high because it's the only place in the world that still knows their history and still have their history intact. And why is that the case? Because they have different languages. So each and everybody else has its own history in its own language. And in order to you know, wipe out that history, it is very, very difficult. So if you read, um, if you um, have read your Bible, because a lot of people don't read your Bible to understand that. When Nimrod, when Nimrod was building the Tower of Babel, okay, um, Nimrod was able to do so because the whole earth was of one language. So when God came down, he decided to say, okay, let us make this uh, people not understand every, uh, each other and gave them different languages. Why did he give them different languages? Because in giving them different languages, the taskmasters and everybody who were building the Tower of Babel and the workers and the farmers or whosoever was required to build the Tower of Babel could not understand each other. So the language served as a barrier. He served as a protection from Nimrod, from usurping power all over them. So in the same case, that was, that's what language is serves, because language is, is our history. When the language is gone, the history is gone. So that's why, for example, right here uh, in, uh, in the United States of America, African-Americans who are not African-Americans, who are the aboriginal natives of North and South America, do not know their history. They think they come from Africa when they're not is because the languages are gone. Every language that's almost every language that's spoken in North and South America is from Europe. The native languages are all almost all of them are gone. So that's why they can't trace their history. So that's why God gave us different languages. The different languages serves as a barrier so that a usurper is not able to take control all over the world. But today, 
In today's modern world, the world is being trained in the English language so that it can be easier for the new world order to take effect. Because once you lose your language, your history is gone. It's that simple. And somebody can usurp power over you and dominate over you. So that's the best way to put it. So that's why this particular video is called an African Special Edition. Now, since the uh, albino supremacists have difficulty in taking over Africa, and Africa remains as our last hope of history of tracing ourselves back to creation, they're going through a different route of trying to indoctrinate the Africans so since they can, because like African is a very closed off society, they're very, very spiritual people. I mean, I've never met an African who's not spiritual. And when you understand the true meaning of spirituality, like we explain in a book, then you get to understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to go into too much details about explaining what I mean. But when you get the book and you read it, you'll understand what the meaning of spirituality is. Africans are very, very spiritual people. They are one of the few peoples in the world in which they all have a connection to creation. They always believe in something about God. Why is that the case? Because the languages of Africa still serves that history. That's why the more languages they have in a place, the more connection they have to creation. So that is the reason why Africans are that spiritual. And people, you have to understand that the children of Israel were Africans. The children, the black woolly haired children of Israel were Africans. Remember that they grew up in Egypt. All right. So we'll, we'll, in the book, we're going to find detail to explain all that. So since now we're getting back to making you understand why um, the albino Vatican now is going through a different route. Since Africans are so spiritual and so connected all right, to their land, it's impossible for them to just, you know, uh, try to control the minds of the people with somebody who's born and bred in Africa. That means this person has lived all his life in Africa. So what they do is create their own celebrity Africans to use to control the public mindset of Africans who are in Africa so that they can be used. So all this great celebrities, uh, African celebrities, which a lot of people don't know, which we're going to show you today, are all agents of social engineering for Africans. So the Africans can get the idea and say, oh, I want to look like John Boyega. I want to look like Daniel Kaluuya. I want to look like Lupita Nyong'o. I want to look like uh, Shade Adu. I want to look like Seal. I want to look like uh, David or Yellow. I want to look like Charlie Theron. Uh, who else am I missing there? I want to look like Danai Gurai. I think, is it Danai Gurai? Who's uh, so popular in the uh, uh, series called... Um, um, was a series called again i'm trying to uh the walking dead yep uh there's so many africans out there which uh the vatican has is using as agents so these are people that they have read they have read these africans from childhood took them out of africa they're no longer in africa so they can be used to influence africans agents that they can trust because they can't trust the so-called uh, people who call them celebrities who are actually African means Africans means that they are born and raised in Africa. They live in Africa. They can't trust them because those guys are still connected all right, to their community, still connected to their ancestry, still connected to, uh, you know, the languages. So these ones can be used. But this so-called, you know, um, uh, people that they are breeding right now is going to be used to make Africans believe in the social engineering and change that since they are poor, all right, that they can be like this so-called celebrity Africans and therefore they can be used to make most Africans seek to be like that in their minds and lose their languages and continue to suffer from the bewitching of the albino supremacists or everything that they call the white man. So that's why this particular video is dedicated to Africans. And we call it the John Boyega Africa Special Edition Black Panther 1 because based on the Black Panther movie, they show you how rich and wealthy Africans are with a very advanced society. And why is that? Because Africans still own land and the rest of the world doesn't. And everybody who owns land is not poor. 
because you can work with the land, you can grow your own crops, rear your own animals and live and feed off them without getting into the system of money, into the money system, which enslaves the world. And that's what Africans have, which other continents and other countries in the world do not have. They still can trace themselves down to the land of their great forefathers. And they can show you each and every place and where, where they lived. Because this history is passed down, even though it's not written down, which I would encourage a lot of Africans today, if you're listening, to write your own history down because you don't know how the next few years are going to be. Write your own history down. Do not just pass them orally. Write it down because the history of Africa is the history of creation. And we can all trace ourselves back there one way or the other. All right. Even though technically our great forefathers came from Africa and they can no longer uh, and we, we can no longer rather trace a history down there. But in some way or shape or form, as long as that history, Africa, uh, history of Africa is right there, we can still have a connection. We can still have some hope of knowing how we came by and what's our purpose in this world. So uh, we're looking at John Boyega today, and John Boyega is not, he's a clear, um, b before I want to talk about John Boyega, I have to say this, that I have met a couple of actors, not meeting rather in person, but through a lot of interactions that I've, I've seen them, uh, John Boyega is one of the best actors the world has ever seen. His greatest acting is not done on screen, it's done when it's off screen. He's a great, great actor. Great. I would say one of the greatest. And a lot of people might call me out on that. But that is just my own opinion. I'm not saying it's fact. But to me, because I study a lot of acting uh, based on the fact that, like I've talked about, that we are going to uh, be making so uh, uh, making movies. So I've started a lot of actors and acting and, you know, directions and all that. And so I can tell you with a, without a shadow of the doubt in my mind that John Boyega is one of the best actors the world has ever seen. One of the best. One of the very best. But it's so sad that John Boyega is not the gender he's, uh, he claims because the Vatican raised her as a stooge to be used to influence Africans. Someone they can trust with whatsoever they, they say or do that he's going to get it done for them. So that if they're trying to uh, do something and maybe um, send an agent down into Africa to bring some sort of, you know, weaponized uh, weapon, it could be something like Ebola. They know who they can trust that can pass through and do whatever he wants to do. So these are all what the celebrities that are being raised outside of Africa are for, even though they can they are Africans in, in the sense that their parents are Africans, but they are not Africans really in their mind. That's the best way I can put it, because they've been raised out of a different mindset. So that's why we're looking into John Boyega here. And I don't want Africans to be uh, brainwashed and it will suffer from the bewitching. The so-called white man, as they call it, has no good for you. Has no, the, the Vatican, let me just put it right. I'm not saying white man in general. I'm talking about the Vatican here. The Vatican has no good for you. And, you know, uh, and there are so many Catholic churches in Africa because it serves that purpose. So. Uh, if it's your first time on my channel, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, if you heard all this and you want to continue watching this particular video, this is the part that I advise that you pause the video right here and go look for the Primer video and watch the Primer video first. Because when you watch the Primer video, a lot of the things I'm saying is going to make a lot of sense to you. You're not going to have a lot of unanswered questions. The Primer video is the most important video that you have to watch on this channel before you watch any other video. Otherwise, a lot of the stuff that we're saying is going to just get into one ear and you're going to forget in the next minute and you're going to have uh, you're going to have many many questions clouding your mind that you will not be able to enjoy the video. So I'm going to pause this video or rather I want you to pause this video and go look for the primer video and let me show you how to get to the primer video so you can do that and come back and continue watching this video when you're done with the primer video. So the Primer video will be the oldest video that you watch in this channel. The name is called Primer. There's also a playlist for it called Primer. In that playlist, we have like two or three more videos, which is also very important that you should watch so you can get a basic understanding and your mind can be opened up to understanding our videos. So when you click on any video that we have on this channel, including the Primer video, there's a link in the description section. The link is going to take you to a document. The document is called Male versus Female Dif uh, Visual Differences. We advise that you download this document and you study it on your own so that you can know the difference between male and female based on the secondary and 
secondary male and female characteristics even though we stick to the primary characteristics of defining the sexes which is based on the skeletal structure so uh, if we were, if we were in living in a normal world this would serve as a very clear identification of the sexes based on the secondary and male and female characteristics but we rather deal with the primary which is the skeletal structure because remember the secondary is based on the primary so you can't judge someone based on the secondary uh, male and female characteristics because a lot of the things that we are uh, eating, uh, there are hormones in our food, uh, poisons in our food and water and air is changing the secondary male and female characteristics to such that it becomes unisex. So that means, for example, a female can have an Adam's apple, a female can have that brow bossing because that's all skin and true, let's say, uh, let's say such things as plastic surgery, body contouring and a lot of stuff, a female body can be contoured in such a way that it looks like it's a male, even though the hips might be the only problem, but you look at it especially if the female is dressed up as a man you wouldn't be able to tell that you're looking at a female so that's why we stick to the primary uh, differences between male and female which is the skeletal structure so which we advise also that you do now uh, since we're already neck deep in transvestigation because we're going to be looking taking a look, good look at john boyega very popular actor right now in the world he's uh, currently in the movie called star wars and currently in the movie called um uh, um, uh, Pacific Ring. He's been in a lot of movies and he's a great actor, like I said, but we're going to find out that John Boyega is a stooge and is being used to influence Africans in the wrong way because he's a reliable servant that the Vatican can trust because they raised him or her. All right. So uh, her, actually, let's let's say that. Um, let's go into this document right here. So you're looking at a female to the left of my screen. She has an arch in her back. Why does a female have an arch in her back? A female has an arch in her back because her pelvis is tilted forward. The pelvis is tilted forward so that the baby can stay inside the womb for the nine months of conception that is going to be in there so it doesn't drop out. And the arch in the back right here, as you can see, is also extra support for distributing the weight of pregnancy across the body so that the female doesn't hurt herself and the child or the baby when she's walking. And so that's why a woman has an arch in her back. If you draw a line, if you draw the arch from, from below the shoulder blades of a female, it's going to form a C-shaped arch in the back. If you draw it from high above the shoulder blade, it's going to form like an S-shaped uh, back. Uh, S-shaped back or S-shaped arch in the back. So what you have to know is that the female back is shaped like a C or an S. So remember those two letters. A man's back is shaped like a D or a P because a man's back does not arch because the pelvis of a man is straight up and down because a man is not required to give birth. A man will never give birth. He was not designed to give birth. So if a man's back wants to arch, it's gonna arch outwards like you see right here into the shape of a D or a P, but it's gonna go straight straight up and down into the pelvic region there is no arch right here while a female's back arches okay so we scroll further into the document just to show you that um it, uh, a female's back will always arch much much more because she is designed to give birth that arch is the extra support right there to distribute the weight of pregnancy across the body so that she can carry that pregnancy well because as we all know arches are better supports for carrying heavy loads than straight up trusses or straight up supports so as you can see here this female has a deep sea arch in her back because her pelvis is tilted forward and she's kneeling down right there it doesn't matter if the female is big or small tall short uh, some people think like maybe um, what's the right word if you've seen um, a very short people very very short people or pygmies like that that it could change uh, that back nothing uh, change the shape or the arch in the back nothing can change the arch in a woman's back the arch is there is because the pelvis is tilted forward and every woman has a pelvis that's tilted forward otherwise she is not able to get pregnant she is not able to carry babies so a woman always has an arch in her back as you can see right here this is a big female to the left of my screen she has an arch in her back and her pelvis is tilted forward a small female to the right of my screen right here arch in the back and the pelvis is tilted forward uh doesn't matter the female's got muscles nothing can change that arch in the back as you can see right here muscular female arch in the back another muscular female right here arch in the back because remember everything that you do Every drug that you take or you're trying to mutilate yourself into believing that you're a man or a woman when you are not born as one is only going to change the water content, is only going to change the skin, it's going to change only the muscles. 
but nothing can change the skeletal structure because tampering with the skeletal structure is more like dying because the skeletal structure is the foundation and like with all houses if you mess with the foundation the, fa the whole house comes down so if you mess with the skeletal structure you're going to end up dead so nothing can change the skeletal structure of a male to a female or neither from a female to a male so let's play uh, a short clip just to show you where the female location of the hips are because this is the most important aspect of the differences in the skeletal structure is the hips of a female are below the crotch and the hips of a male are above the crotch. So let's do that. So here is the clip right here. And uh, as you will see with regular females, what do I mean regular females? With a regular females, her hips are always going to be wider than her shoulders. Now you have females in which the shoulders are wider than the hips. That does not make you to be a man, okay? Because remember, the location of the hip, irrespective of if a female has wider shoulders or shorter shoulders, is always going to be below the crotch. It doesn't matter if the hips are narrow, or small, or tiny, or big, huge, the location of the female hip is below the crotch. And also, the pelvis of a woman is farther inside the body because the whole reproductive organs have to be here for the baby to be in there for the nine months of conception that she's going to go through. So if you draw a line at the female waist right here, this is the female waist right here above the navel, and you draw a line below which is where the end of the torso of the body is, which is the hips, you'll find that when you draw that line, it's going to split the whole torso of a female's body into half. With males, it's the opposite. If you draw a line from a man's waist to his hips, he's going to just have one quarter the length of the total length, uh, one quarter the length of the torso of the body for a man. So for a female, it's half. So with the regular females, you notice that you start spreading or getting wider from underneath your elbows. And the widest point will always be your hips, which is below the crotch. So this female right here is going to be measured. Her hips are going to be measured because she's about to get sewn into a clothes or dress or whatever she was wearing. And this is how females all around the world or all the clothes sewn around the world rather are made. The location of the hip is known to be below the crotch because if, if it's in any other place, if females had varying degrees for their hips in their body and these clothes were being sewn according to that, the clothes would not fit. A lot of the clothes that are sewn from so many different countries and gone and brought into so many different countries would have problems because it wouldn't fit those females because they have varying degrees of where the location of their hips are. But the location of all females regardless of ethnicity, color of skin, texture of hair, the location of the female hip is below the crotch. So I play this video so you can see exactly where this is happening. As you can see right there, the tape goes round and as you can see that location is below the crotch. Okay. Another thing, a female Q angle, the Q angle is the angle between the hip and the knee. And females have a much more acute angle because they have a wider pelvis. Why do females have a wider pelvis? Because the pubic arch, that means the space in between the thighs right here, have to be wider for a baby to come out of it. So with regular females, uh, the, the degree of that uh, pelvic arch or pelvic, uh, pelvic arch is 120 degrees or more. For males, it's 90 degrees or less. Anything less for a female, she's going to have problems uh, with delivering a baby and she has to go through something like a C-section a a because she has a narrow pubic arch. So it doesn't matter regardless if the female uh, goes through a C-section, the location of her hips are still below the crotch, even if she, she has a very narrow pubic arch. So that's why the pelvis of a woman is uh, wider. And because the pubic arch is wider, it makes everything to be farther apart in the pelvic region, including the hips. So the hips are farther apart in the body, and that's what gives the female the Q, ang uh, the Q angle and the hourglass figure that you see, that acute Q angle and the hourglass figure. So for a female, the Q angle starts below the crutch. For males, it's going to start higher up above the crutch because that's where the male hip and location is at. So this female is going to turn around so you can see from the back exactly where the location of that hip is and where the Q angle is. As you can see right there, it's slightly above the bum line right here, but below the crutch. If this was male, 
the skew angle will start higher up, far above this crutch. So I always suggest that if you have problems uh, looking at the picture from of a person from the front and you suffer from cognitive dissonance, which a lot of us suffer from because the Vatican has made it so, try to see if you can find a picture of the person from the back because once you see the picture of the person from the back, you're going to be able to identify clearly that you're either looking at a female or a male because of how acute the cue angle is from the back. So do that so. Uh, you can understand and be able to identify the genders of the so many deceivers and agents which the Vatican has unleashed on our world, in, in especially in politics and the entertainment, which is used to social engineer our minds to accept the new world order, which only has one purpose, to enslave the whole of humanity for the devil himself. It's as simple as that. All right. So let's continue on with uh, the Africa Special or John Boyega Africa Special Edition Black Panther Part 1. So we're going to, before we uh, take a look at John Boyega, we're going to actually get into the transvestigation of John Boyega. Um, we're going to take a look at some, we're not transvestigating these actors or actresses. We just want to let you know that uh, this particular actors and actresses beside John Boyega that we're transvestigating on this video are Africans. That means they are born of African parents, have an African heritage, uh, grew up in Africa at some point in time in their lives or whatever, and they can really trace their history. But now uh, they are in the hands of the Vatican who's using them to control a perception of our world. So let's just get into some of these uh, Africans, which a lot of people don't know. So one of them is Idris Elba. Um, you can pause the video. You can just go Google because I don't have the time to uh, um, uh, uh, maybe just point you to the website because they are they are known by their names. You can just uh, get in your search engine and just type Idris Elba. Idris Elba is an African. And as you can see right here, let's go into his um, early life. He says an only child Elba was born on 6th September. We do not know if that's a construction of the Vatican right there because we think they are. They are born of African parents, but... Who knows, the Vatican could have hijacked their lives and their history. And you you just tend to notice a trend in some of these Africans that we're going to be mentioning there. It's either their parents died or something, something happened. So that means they are now under the tutelage of the Vatican. So he was born on 6 September 1972. A Vatican code of number is right there in effect. So if you're interested in the Vatican code of numbers, please look for the video called Lisa Lopez video. I don't know if it's pronounced Lisa Lopez or Lisa Lopes, but it's spelled L-O-P-E-S, in which we go into in-depth detail in making you understand what the Vatican code of number is all about. And also, there are so many other videos in that playlist because there's a playlist on the channel called The Vatican Code of Numbers, which you can look into. So Idris Elba here was born 6, 6 September 1972. We don't know if that is true. But if you read here, he said his father, Winston, was a Syria Leonin and worked in the Ford Motor Factory at Dagenham. And his mother, Eve, was a Ghanaian. So he... Um, um, he was he was born by African parents. It says Elba was brought up in Hackney and East Ham and shortened his name from Idrissa to Idrissa School in Kenningtown where he first became involved in acting. He credits the stage with giving him his first big break. Having seen an advertisement for a play in a newspaper, Elba auditioned and met his agent while performing in the role. So um, uh, Idris Elba is really, really African, all right? African, you know, the, Af uh, the Vatican sends him home all the time because he's, he's going to he's being used to massage and social engineer Africans is to still believe a lot of the things that the Vatican wants us to believe in. Right. The celebrity lifestyle that if you're not on TV, that, that you're on TV, that means you're very successful. You speak good English that you should seek to be, uh, you know, an Englishman in the natural sense of somebody from the Western world like Idris Elba is being portrayed to us on TV. So Idris Elba is an, an African. So let's take a look at another one. Um, this one is called David Oyelowo. David Oyelowo right here. His full name is David. I'm going to try, try to pronounce the name. David Oyetukumbo Oyelowo. That's his name right there. He's a British Nigerian actor and producer. So he's from Africa as well. He was very popular in one of the movies, I think, called... Um, Planet of the Apes, and he also acted as Martin Luther King in the movie called, I think, Selma. And um, if you scroll down to his early life, he said, oh, oh, yellow was born in Oxford, England, to Nigerian parents of Yoruba ethnicity. He was brought up as a Baptist. Now, here is one thing that the Vatican is so, so good at, because they want a lot of Africans who was very, very spiritual to accept most of these actors, which are 
all agents of the Vatican, they make you believe that these people are Christian and add some sort of spirituality to them. But if these guys were really, really Christian, I mean like the Idris Elbas and the John Boyega, because they see a lot of the nonsense that the Vatican is doing, they would tell you the truth about the fabrication of history that they fabricate. And then most of the people that they have been with are not the sex and gender they claim. For example, Idris Elba was in a movie with Beyonce. I've forgotten what the name of the movie is was about. But if you if and be, and Idris Elba was busy laying down there with Beyonce and acting like this was a woman, when he knows for a fact that Beyonce is a man. So this is kind of bewitching that's going on because Idris Elba is part of the system. He doesn't care about you guys. If you love Idris Elba, he doesn't give a damn about you. Because if he wanted to tell you the truth, he would have been telling you that you've been deceived for a very long while and that he's part of the deception in making Beyonce to be a woman when it was actually two men in that movie. Let me actually find out the name of the movie so you guys can go look it up yourself. So the name of the movie is called Obsessed. It was made in 2009, starred Idris Elba and Beyonce. If Idris Elba was so much concerned about the plight of Africans, or uh, the so-called plight, because it's not, it's actually a fabricated plight, because Africans have been made to believe, like the rest of the world, that you shouldn't be getting to agriculture, because the person that feeds you controls you. That's just the way it works. If you don't know how to feed yourself and grow your own uh, crops and animals, you're a slave. Because you have to remember the very first step in every slavery is the lack of land ownership. The children of Israel, which the Bible clearly tells us the logic for slavery, that's why it's called the book of Genesis and Exodus first, was clearly telling you how slavery comes about. That if you do not own land, then you are a slave. The children of Israel were slaves in Egypt because they did not own the land. So the Pharaoh who gave them the land to live on, to plant their own crops and raise their own animals, died. And the Pharaoh, the new Pharaoh that came and said, you guys do not own the land. You have to pay me for the land. And that's how the children of Israel became slaves, because they had to get into the money system to pay rent for their land, which we all do in this world. We all pay rent. We pay rent for the houses that we live on mortgages because we do not own the land. So that's why the very first thing that God did was to bring the children out of, when he brought the children of Israel out, was to give them land so they could no longer be slaves. This is the logic which is in the Bible, which the Vatican tells you not to read. But they use it to run the world. They use it to run the world. And they don't make you understand because they control the churches or whatsoever because all churches are a fabrication. The Christian religion is a fabrication. It has no truth in it. It's only there to control your mind because if it wasn't there, it would tell you the truth that I'm telling you right now. The so-called pastors who are agents of the Vatican would have told you the truth. So here is Idris Elba kissing on another man in the movie Obsessed and not telling you that this so-called man or woman right here is not the gender that she claims because he knows that. It's because Idris Elba is part of the system. That's why you can't trust or look up to any celebrity. And we're dedicating this video to Africans in general, most specifically Africans, to get this truth so they understand what's going on. We have so many videos on Beyonce if you're interested. Get up on the channel and go look for it. So many, many, many videos. And we may, we may make another one because this is one of the most uh, subtle transgenders that's ever crept into the scene, and which is, it's, it's, it's harrowing for some people to find out that this is actually a man and not a woman. So with every video that we have on this channel, please download and save it for future posterity because it might be the only history that we have left, which tells you from A to Z how everything is connected. So you understand your world and understand what's going on. So let's get back. We were on uh, David Oyelowo. We were trying to tell you that he is, boy, he was Nigerian, as he says, his early life. He says Oyelowo, Oyelowo was born in Oxford, England to Nigerian parents of Yoruba ethnicity, was born up as a Baptist. So to confuse a lot of the people, uh, a lot of the Africans in general, that this is a Christian so they can accept him when he is even coming with so many things that may kill them. All right. He grew up in two team back until he was six. See the Vatican code of numbers right there until he was six. 
all right when his family moved to lagos nigeria where his father stephen worked for the national airline model for a railway company david attended a military style attended a military style boarding school all these are all uh, you know symbolism of an agent this is a straight up agent all right so that's on david yellow remember we're just talking about them we're not saying that any of them is a transgender set for uh, De, uh john boyega which we'll be covering so let's go on to the next african here his name is uh she would tell a uh she would tell his, his name is the name he says is she would tell i'm sorry if i'm messing up the name just pardon me says so she would tell umidi e jofo uh born in july 19 july 10 July 1977 is an English actor after enrolling at the National Youth Theater in 1995. Uh, he's an African too. Uh, let's see his early life just to see where he was born. Said a, a G4 was born in London's Forest Gate to middle class Nigerian parents. His father, uh, Arinza, was a doctor and his mother, Obia Julu, was a pharmacist. His younger sister is CNN correspondent Zane Asia. So he even has a sister who was a CNN correspondent, all agents of the Albino Vatican. Now, people, for Africans, I just want to make you guys understand something real clear here. There is nothing special about seeing somebody having straight hair and light skin because you guys give birth to those kind of people every time. Every time. So when you're lifting up an albino and seeing him as a god, you're actually making a mockery of yourself because you give birth to the same people all the time. White people, the name white means to be an albino. That is where the history of the word comes from. When they say white, it's not a designation of a color because white means an absence of all color. The right term is albino. You get the word white from the word albino, which means albus, a lack of melanin. There is nothing special about people with straight hair. It doesn't matter in what shape or form they come in as a Chinese, Japanese, or Europeans, or the so-called modern Chinese and Europeans, because people don't even understand that even though all people, all people who are albino in this world have a history in Asia, Africans don't even understand that they gave birth to Asians. They gave birth to the Asians. When you get a book, you will understand that. You'll understand that very well. Like I said before, the book is currently out. So if you're interested in this, uh, please send us an email. And we'll tell you the price and the cost of shipping. If you do not receive an email real quick, just know that we put you on a queue because we have a limited number of the books. So we have to uh, serve the people on a first come, first serve basis, and you will get an email on the price and cost of shipping immediately when any copy becomes available. So please bear with, bear with us and be very, very patient. You will get the book. We'll ship the book to you anywhere you are in the world as long as you have an address that the book can be mailed to. All right. So we go into that. So there's nothing special. The Vatican, the albino Vatican or the white man, as you say, it has nothing in it for you if you're African. You are guys are the richest people in the world, but you do not know that because you've been taught and you've been trained every single day that the lifestyle that you see on TV is what you ought to live by and that you should forsake your agricultural practices, which you guys can do because you own the land for the white collar jobs which only lead you to slavery the money system leads you to slavery and the agents of the vatican have been planted in so many african countries they are the leaders of each country in the politics and whatever sphere religion so that they control your mind and keep on enslaving you and keep on making you believe that you are poor broke and needy and always needing help and handouts all right so let's continue on to show you another uh uh, African, which a lot of people may not know. Uh, this one is a very popular singer. Her name is Shade. 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 Uh, uh, Shade had so many hits. I think way back here. I'm not sure if it's in the 80s or 90s, but there are a couple of songs that even she has that Drake has a remix on. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that Shade Adu is African and is from Nigeria as well. Uh, name she says Helen Fola Shad. I do, right? Uh, it says, uh, 
uh, CB uh, Yoruba. She she's actually Yoruba. Um, what else? This it says uh, it says born 16 January. See that the Vatican code of numbers is still in there. 16 January 1959, known professionally as Shad Adu or simply Shad. Is it Shad or Shade? I think it's Shade. Right? I think it's Shade. Pardon me, but mixing it all up. But all the same, let's go back to uh, early history just to show you that she was born right in the country of Nigeria. It says here Helen. For La Shade, Adu was born on 16 January 1959 in, I, is it Ibadan, o, Oyo State, Nigeria? Her middle name, Folo Shade, means honor confers a crown. Her parents, Ed B.C. Edu, a Nigerian lecturer in economics of Yoruba background, and Anne Hayes, an English district nurse, made in London, married in 1955, then moved to Nigeria. Her parents separated. However, and Anne Hayes returned to England, taking four years. Shede and older brother Banji with her to live with their grandparents near Colchester, Essex. Shuen Shade was 11 years old. But today, you know, these are all people that the Vatican has groomed. Because like I've told you, when you read some of these stories, it happens to be that Either the parents were divorced or someone died. It it's always has to do with that kind of story because I think there are straight up agents. They were being raised from childhood to be in the position that they are. So Shadia right here is another African which a lot of people don't know. There are so many of them, but just for the purposes of this video, we're just going to be featuring some of them that a lot of people do not know about. Um, here's another person who's also very popular. Uh, his name is Seal. Seal is a... Uh, let me see. What is he? Where is he from here? Let me hold on. Let me find out where Seal is from. So Seal is Nigerian also. So there are many, many, uh, I mean, amongst Africans, uh, or let's say um, black people in the world, it's generally considered that uh, anywhere you go in the world that at least maybe um, three out of every black people you see will be Nigerians. They're the most populous uh, black nation in the world, as we're told. So it says here, Seal uh, is Henry Olusegun, Lusegun, Adiola Samuel. Sorry if I'm mess messing up the name. Uh, born 19 February 1963, known professionally as Seal, is a British singer and songwriter. Let's see where he was born. Uh... Uh, he said he was Henry uh, Olusegun Idiola. Samuel was born on 19 February 1963 at St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, London, to Nigerian mother, Ad B.C. Ogundiji, and a Brazilian father, Francis Samuel. Seal's first and middle names are in the Yoruba language. So, he's Yoruba. A lot of people may not know, but this is a straight-up agent. They're used to influence Africans to make them believe that they should be like them or seek to be like them because this is what success is about is to uh, engross yourself in the western language and western education and forsake your agricultural practices and become enslaved to the albino vaticans in power so let's go to another uh nigerian here who is very very popular right now his name is anthony joshua he's a boxer um he's currently uh he says anthony Oluwe Femi Ole Seni Joshua, NBA born 15 October, is a British professional boxer. He's currently unified world heavyweight champion, having held the IBF title since 2016, the WA Super and IBU title since 2017, and the WO title since March 2018. At regional level, he held the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles from 2014 to 2016. Joshua represented England at the 2011 World Champions as an amateur in the Super Weight heavyweight division winning a silver medal he's a boxer now who's very very popular um let's see early life says joshua was born in watford uh headford share to nigerian parents yita and robert joshua okay joshua also has irish ancestry through his father's side specifically joshua is of yoruba ethnicity so he is nigerian all the way He's Nigerian all the way. So he says his cousin uh, Ben Le Yemi is also a professional boxer. He says he Joshua grew up for some of his early years in Nigeria as a boarding school student. So he grew up, spent most of his time is uh, uh, in uh, in the in the country of Nigeria. But Anthony Joshua here will, I mean, in in his fights and in the you know his uh, commentaries and uh, you know interviews. He doesn't even make you understand to know that he's actually African 
and that he hails from the country of Nigeria. Actually, so that's another popular. Uh, he's is an agent. All right, right now he's a Vatican agent, used to influence the world of Africans. All right, to make them believe that this is what they ought to be instead of them African selves. Uh, let's go over to another popular African. Uh, his name is Daniel Kaluuya. He's in the Black Panther movie, um, and he was, a, he, he was also in a movie called um, uh, Thing Get Out, uh, which was social programming people to uh, say that, you know, that the so-called races of black and white shouldn't be mixing together. That is bad because the albino supremacists require that, require racism to remain the elites because they don't want to get bred out. If you're more interested in that particular uh, topic to understand what racism is all about, then get uh get get on the channel and look for the myth of whiteness and the myth of whiteness has up to 15 parts and it's going to tell you the whole truth from start to finish so you can understand what's going on and why racism and why if africans are made to look very poor needy broke uh jungle animals uh they don't they don't, have, they don't know understand anything there are you know uh the debased or the worst of the worst in the world and all that kind of degrading reasons. You need to watch the myth of whiteness to understand that. So um, Daniel Kaluuya, uh, he's uh, let's see where Daniel Kaluuya is from. Um, says here Kaluuya was born in London, the son of Ugandan immigrants. So he's Ugandan. He was raised by his mother Damel on a council estate in Kentish Town, along with an older sister. His father lived in Uganda and rarely visited due to UK visa regulations. So you can see that what I'm always trying to tell you that these are straight up agents because there's always something wrong with the families. Either they are split up or the parents died. Something, something which makes you understand that real agents of the Vatican taken by the Vatican and trained to be because that's what the Vatican does. They like taking babies and training them from childhood so that they can indoctrinate, indoctrinate them with the mind and mentality that they use to run and organize our world. So Daniel Kaluuya is another popular African here, which a lot of people do not know about. Uh, let's go into another one. Name is Danai Gurira. Danai Gurira is also in the movie Black Panther. That's why this uh, particular video is also a Black Panther series part number one. And um, De her name says is Danai Chikasai Gurira born February 14, 1978, is an American actress and playwright best known for a role as Michonne on The Walking Dead. Let's see where she was born. She was, uh, said Gurira was born in Grinnell, Iowa, to Josephine Gurira, a college librarian, and Roger Gurira, a lecturer in the Department of Chemistry at Grinnell College. Both parents later joined the staff of the University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Her parents moved to the United States from southern Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. So she is Zimbabwe. All right. So, uh, but um, you'll ne they'll never tell you that. She, the, the history isn't always, even though this is going to be portrayed of African, but they don't want to make you know, right? Because she is now part of the uh, uh, white supremacy world in Dana Gurira. She's been trained from childhood to be in that position, taken from the Vatican. Probably her parents could, I don't know if her parents are still alive. Uh, what does it say here? Say, Gurira lived in Grinnell until December 1983 when at age five, she and her family moved back to Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe, after the country gained independence. She attended high school, Dominican Convent High School afterwards. Uh, what else? She returned to the United States to study at Mac Lester College in St. Paul, Minnesota, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Physiology. Gurira has earned also a Master of Fine Arts in Acting from New York's University Tisch School of Arts. So, well, the parents are not, we don't, they don't talk about the parents no more right here. So that means she's a straight up agent of the Vatican now. Let's go to another person because, like I've said before, uh, we featured, uh, we have a part one of is Wakanda real or not on this particular uh, channel. So go look for uh, the video called Wakanda real or not part one in which we talk about that the director of Wakanda, uh, who's a black dude, I forgot what his name is at this point in time, but the director of the movie Black Panther is not the gender that he claims. And one of the actors, uh, in Black Panther, is uh, Black Panther is not the gender that he claims. About three of them, or two actors actually, are not the gender that claim. If uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Daniel Kaluuya and um, 
Denai Guerrero, which we've just talked about here, where one where we're actually straightforward, honest Africans, seeing the injustices that's being imputed upon their people through the system of white supremacy, and they were interested in the truth. They would have told you, look, these three, the actor and these two actors are not the gender they claim because they know, but they never utter a word because they are all being trained by the Vatican as agents. They are part of the system and indoctrination of telling us lies every day. And this is what the Vatican has used them for and is continue using them for because a lot of so-called Africans are going to be looking up to these people not knowing that they are actually out there to destroy you. That's the best way I can put it in simple, very clear terms. They don't give a damn about you. They are only used to social engineer Africans to keep on believing in the system of white supremacy and to love it. Nothing more. So Lupita Nyong'o right here, I to say her name is Lupita Amundi Nyong'o. She's Kenyan English. Uh, so let's see where she was born. It says, uh, is a Kenyan Mexican actress, the daughter of Kenyan politician Peter. I so it's a daughter of a politician. Oh, this is a straight up agent. Because if the father is a politician, she is working for the Vatican directly. Uh, she was born in Mexico City where her father was teaching and was raised in Kenya from the age of one. So uh, early life here says... Uh, uh, Young was born in Mexico City, Mexico, to Kenyan parents Dorothy Ogadu Buyu and Peter Anyang Ngyongo, a college professor. The family had left Kenya in 1980 for a period because of political repression and unrest. Peter's brother Charles Ngyongo disappeared after he was thrown off a ferry in 1980. Ngyongo identifies as Kenyan Mexican and has dark Kenyan and Mexican citizenship. She's of Luo descent on both sides of her family and is the second of six children. This could also be a fabrication right there because. I mean, uh, the Vatican could have raised this child all by their own, all right? But because they're putting on a lot of the Vatican code of numbers in here, these people can't be trusted. They are only there to uh, tell lies and encourage the system of uh, evil of the Vatican and white supremacy as well. So let's continue on to another African, which a lot of people may not know. Um, her name is Charlize Theron. A lot of people may not have known that Charlize Theron is African. Yes, she is an albino African. Said, born 7 August 1975, and is a South African and American actress and a film producer. She's known for starring in so many numerous Hollywood movies. There's so many movies that Charlize Theron has been in. Uh, let's see. But right now, she's in one movie. What's the name of that movie? Um, forgetting the. Let me try to find the name of that movie because I want to talk about it a bit. Okay, the name of the movie is called, I think, Atomic Blonde. In that particular movie, Charlie Theron is seen kissing on another girl. That means she's practically telling Africans that homosexuality is something that you guys should get involved in. And if we know that one of the most closed-off societies to homosexuality in the world is African societies, they do not condone it in any way, shape, or form. But they're trying to make this to be something that the Africans can indulge them, indulge themselves in so that their history and their languages can be lost. And so the history of creation, which they still have in their languages and histories and stories, can all be lost. And we will not be able to trace ourselves down to God Almighty. This is what Charlie Theron, an African agent, is doing in uh, trying to... Um, social engineer and mind condition Africans to accept, even though they forcefully, like in South Africa, make homosexuality a law through those African agents. People don't understand that people like Nelson Mandela and all the great maybe so-called African leaders here are all agents of the Vatican. They have nothing good for you. All they have to do is indoctrinate you with the system of white supremacy and keep on enslaving you for the albino Vatican. That's all what they're doing. So uh, it says here, Theron was born in Benani in the then Transvaal province, New Gauteng province of South Africa. The only child of Gerda, Jacoba, Alita, Niemaritz, and Charles Jacobus Theron was born 27 November 1947. Second World War figure, Danny Theron was a great great uncle. She is from an Africana family and her ancestry includes Dutch as well as French and German. Her French followers were Edley, huge and not settlers in South Africa. Theron is an oxygen name or originally spelled Theron, pronounced in Africans as Tron. So these are, uh, this is all like, you know, um, uh, histories and making you understand that Charlie Theron is African. So she's another African agent used to influence, especially people from South Africa, uh, right over there. And we will say, oh, she's one of her own. So that's um, 
a list of some of the most popular. There are so many names out there which we can't get into uh, uh, right now. But for the purposes of this particular special edition on Africa, John Boyega special edition, uh, African special edition, uh, this should serve enough purpose so that you guys can come to understand um, what's going on and that Africans who are the richest people in the world as the movie Black Panther portrayed and made you understand because a lot of uh, people watch that movie and said but Africa is not this way they don't understand that the albino Vatican is actually telling you guys the truth they're telling you the truth right in front of your eyes but because you believe in how you're being portrayed in the media and the stories that have been told to you throughout all history that you are nobody, you don't have no history, that you guys are jungle animals. You have come to believe this story, not knowing that you are the richest and the wealthiest people in the world because you have your history, you have your land, and you have your languages. You can actually talk about and know where you came from when a lot of us around the world do not know that because our history and the language has been taken away from you. So that's why the Albino Vatican is so much interested in making sure that Africans lose that history because once they lose it, then like what happened under Nimrod becomes possible again. The whole world is enslaved. So, uh, well, with that, let's continue on to the transvestigation of John Boyega. We're going to read something from his Wikipedia page before we go into John Boyega to show you that all this while you've been looking at a female, an African female, who's portrayed to us as a man. Because I remember the first time I, I watched John Boyega, uh, the first movie I watched on John Boyega is to think uh, the movie was called um, Attack the Block. When I looked at John Boyega, I was like, that's a weird looking man. You know, I was always wondering what is wrong with John Boyega? I could never, ever wrap my fingers around it to understand what was really going on. But I was looking at him, him and saying, he's a strange looking black man. But now that we have come to know what we know, John Boyega is a woman portrayed to us as a female. So he says here, John Adedayo B. Adeg Boyega, born 17 March 1929, known professionally as John Boyega, is an English actor known for playing Finn in the 2015 film Star Wars The Force Awakens. Uh, but when you scroll down here, he says uh, Boyega was born on 17 March, Vatican Code of Numbers right there, 1992 in London, England, to British Nigerian parents, Abigail Ni Abodarin. Now, when I looked at John Boyega's parents, the so-called parents of John Boyega, as we will show you in this particular uh, video, we found out that there is there is no similarity between. I mean, the parents don't look like John Boyega at all. It seems like John Boyega was somebody just invented and being made or being given to us that he's actually from Nigerian parents when he's not. So it could mean that the whole parents and the whole family of John Boyega is a fabrication that he's an actual stooge. It could have been that he's Nigerian, no doubt, could have been raised in an orphanage or taken off, care of by the Vatican because the Vatican owns 90% of all orphanages in the world, 90% of it. So they can take these young children at very early ages and raise them as their own. And he's being lied to us right now that he is actually was raised organically, that he happened organically through Nigerian parents who might also be agents, these so-called parents that we find in the pictures that we're going to show you today. So let's continue on with the transvestigation of John Boyega now. But before we do, this is the point that I have to put out a warning on the channel. There is no slandering allowed on this channel. If you're going to label someone a transgender and you say that someone is not the gender that they claim, you have to provide links of pictures based on the female skeletal structure, which is the primary identification of identifying if someone is the sex and gender they claim or not. That means your pictures have to show, the links of pictures have to show that the person has hips below the crotch, an arch in the back, a pelvis tilted forward, and a wide pubic arch or not. Otherwise, you are considered to be slandering and spreading frivolous rumors about people on this channel. If you want to spread rumors, the right way to do it is send us an email. Uh, email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com. We'll entertain any rumor and we will entertain any form of slandering that you want to do over there. But on this comment section, 
if you to ask a question about someone's gender, you have to provide those links of pictures. Otherwise, you're going to be considered to be slandering. All right. Because you have to prove that you're not delusional and that you're putting in your time and effort into making sure that you don't fall for your deception and that this deception does not get passed on into every generation continuously. Because all what we're trying to do here is press a reset button because we've been lied to for a very long time. We want to have some truth. This channel is not for everybody. It's for those seeking the truth. So if you're getting entertained by it, you're in the wrong place. Because like I've always said, and like I'm starting to say in most videos right now, if all you come to this channel and all you're getting is transgenders, you're getting white supremacy, and you're getting the fact that we're being lied to, and that the Vatican controls our world, what you're getting is the wrong message. Because at the end of the day, all what we're trying to show you is that all what is going on is a fight for your soul, and that God created this world and created us in his image, which is black with woolly hair, and some people are albinos, and that there is no such thing as race, but ethnicities. The history of our lives can be traced back to creation once you know that. So everything else that's going on around here is trying to make you pick a side. What side are you going to pick? You're going to pick the side for the devil or you're going to pick a side for God? That is the question that we're trying to answer and show you every day on this channel. So the channel is not for everybody. If you're deluded, stay where you are. You don't need to be up in here. A lot of people say we talk too much, I talk too much, the video takes too long, but the video is not for you because you get into a movie theater and you pay for money and you sit through a long ridiculous movie which is brainwashing and killing you and you can't you don't even have the time to complain to the director or the person who made the movie. But because you have that ability to do so right here, you think you should do it because you're deluded and you're brainwashed. Go back to watching your long movies and stop bothering us. All right? We're here for a very specific set of people. We are not here for everybody. Okay? So, if you have to label someone a transgender, you have to provide links of evidence of pictures based on the primary identifi identification of the skeletal structure. Otherwise, you're considered to be slandering. And as usual, we are not against transgenders. We're exposing the liars. The people that lie. In telling you that they are the sex and gender they claim when they're not. That's all what we're doing. Okay? And as usual, the Vatican hasn't changed. They're trying to, you know, shut us down. They landed a strike on an account. So that's why we put all this uh, information in a book. And let me show you one of those strikes right now at this point in time. So here is the strike that the Vatican landed on an account on, uh, landed on this particular channel. On the Selena Q video because we were trying to show the world that Selena Q was not the gender that she claimed because a lot of Hispanic people have been deceived by Selena Q, making them their star or whatever they want to do. But Selena Q was not the gender that she claimed. She was a straight out man being portrayed to us as a female because the Vatican raised him. So the Vatican landed a strike on account and they came in very sneaky, very sneaky, very stupidly sneaky by saying that we had nudity on that particular video. And they did not even have the decency to show us the minute mark of where we had nudity on the Selena Q video. They think everybody's dumb. So they're trying, they will shut this channel down at one point in time because the truth we, bro, we show you guys is going to become so hard and difficult to ignore that they will shut it down in a sneaky way. So that's why we put all this information in a book for you. So if you're interested in the book, you have to let us know. We'll tell you the price and the cost of shipping in the book. The book is out. Like I said, if you don't get an immediate email from us, you should understand that we're serving people on a first come first basis. So we have to go through that list one by one and we have limited copies for now. Okay, so the book is out. So we put all that information in the book. So that you can understand your world because we believe it's the only history that we have left besides the history that the history of the Bible. It's the only history because everything that we talk about in the book is gotten from the Bible as, and also with the world uh, and all the events that are happening around the world. There's almost almost any event that you can think of. We've talked about and connected the dots for you to understand what's going on in your world. So. The Vatican will shut us down. So because of that, 
we want you to send uh, we want we want you to send you we want you rather to send us an email uh, email is the same as the channel name at gmail.com so we'll keep you on the list of correspondences okay one for the book and two because we are building our website and when that website is ready we'll send you an email and say hey the website is ready go over here so we don't have to worry about if YouTube is gonna shut us down which is the Vatican anyway in any way that they want to all right we're also working on movies and uh, the movies will come out in the future but we're working on them right now so we want to also let you understand the movie is going to be telling you the history of a world from start to finish so you can understand things that are happening and, and, and tie it down with all the current events that's what we hope to do so if you're interested in the selling the queue video uh, look for the bono video on this channel uh, and it will give you instructions on how to watch that but for from that let's just continue with uh, the uh, transvestigation of uh, John Boyega right here. Let's go. So here is John Boyega sitting right here. As you can see, John Boyega has a wide pubic arch. It doesn't look like John Boyega has any labia in here. He looks like he, oh sorry, I, was, I meant to say, it doesn't look like John Boyega has any scrotum in here that he has only labia. Because as you can see how round his thighs are, and how wide the pubic arch is right here. This is the sitting of a female and has nothing to do with a man. So John Boyega is 100% female and is not a man in any way, shape or form. That's why he's always looked so weird for a dude, especially for a black male. Let's go. Another picture of John Boyega. You can see that John Boyega is spreading from underneath his elbows right here because that is where the female waist is at. And if you draw a line, like we said before, you draw a line across the female waist to the hips, it's going to divide the whole length of the body, the torso of the body in half right here. Because John Boyega is 100% female, a stooge of the African, uh, sorry, a stooge of the Vatican used to influence Africans. That's what, what John Boyega is all about. All right. So if you're if you're African and you're saying, oh, we have an African, uh, we're being portrayed right, or we're being portrayed by the uh, white man, as they usually say, the albino supremacists in the Vatican, that we're being portrayed as people who are outstanding citizens of uh, notice and everything else. You're being fed a lie. It's only being John Boyega is only in this position to make you believe that the albino supremacists who are trying to run you guys over in Africa actually love you. That they finally accepted you into their fold. That you're no longer a jungle animal. You're somebody of note and importance. That's all a fabrication. As long as the albino Vatican is in this world, racism will never end. Africans and black people in general will always be degraded. They'll always be told a sad, sad story of like you are nobody. Because they don't want you to understand that we are all black and that you Africans gave birth to the entire world entire world you guys gave birth to everybody even them who are persecuting you they don't want you to know that so that history is lost all right so john boyega he is a stooge is a female is not a man in any way shape or form as you can see this hips and q angle is below the crutch because he is female born female a stooge of the vatican Look at that hourglass figure. Look at those wide hips right there below the crotch because he's 100% woman. All right, let's go. Another picture. Here is John Boyega. I found out this picture of John Boyega taken. Um, I think he was on a trip to Nigeria and he took this uh, particular picture with two people here. But here's how people look at pictures and then don't know what they're looking at. Now, Africans as in general, as we've talked about, love the idea of anybody and everybody who's living overseas okay so if john boyega was visiting uh his country or the so-called country that he's said to be from because he's been raised from a totally different mindset from the nigerian people down there if he ever came visiting he wouldn't take picture with two people because the whole community would come out to see john boyega the whole Community, the whole village would know John Boyega is in this village, and every child and every mother or parent would come out to take a picture with him because African communities or African people in general are a community. They don't live like the Western society in which, for example, you know, everybody is on their own. You know, a neighbor doesn't know his own neighbor, 
they hardly say good morning. You could live in the same apartment building complex on the same street for thousands or for let's say 50, 20 years and you don't know the name. In Africa, everybody knows everybody by name. They know them by name. You go to their houses, they come to your houses. That's, that's how Africans are. So if John Boyega was trying to tell us that he was really African in Nigeria visiting his own uh, family, he shouldn't be taking pictures with two people. You would find pictures with him, or with him rather, or with her rather, with the community. Right? But because the Vatican is trying to hide the fact that this is a female and it's not a man, they can't uh, can subject him to that kind of scrutiny. Because most Africans are going to see and look, you, this guy looks very weird. They're going to ask you questions. Why do you look this way? But they don't want to subject him to that kind of scrutiny. So she's not found out that she's an imposter man and is not a man in any way, shape or form, but a woman. They made him take these pictures with two Nigerians down there. These are probably paid Nigerians down there to, to make him look like he's a man when he's not. He's a stooge of the Vatican, a straight up liar. Serving only the purposes. Who knows what, what he brought down to Nigeria at that point in time. Because all of a sudden Ebola just came out from nowhere. We explain what Ebola was doing down there in a book. Who knows what he brought down there. Or what kind of agency that he. Uh, or what, what stuff or what they sent him to do down there. Or what's, what they sent her to do down there. Because in the next couple of years you find out there is an outbreak probably in that community. Where do you think he came from? These are all agents. Trained Vatican agents. So I want Africans to wake up. Because if your history is lost, then we are all lost. The only surviving history is African history. All right, let's go. Here's John Boyega again. As you can see, that is a woman standing right there. There's an arch in this back, even though uh, this picture uh, is very, very blurry because the Vatican doesn't want you to see what's going on. But there is an arch right here, as you can tell from this picture. All right. 100% female, not a man in any way, shape, or form. We'll have some more pictures of John Boyega to show you. And here's John Boyega with Lupita Nyong'o. If Lupita Nyong'o was so interested in the truth, see what's going on in Africa and how Africans are portrayed. She would have told you that she's been dealing with a female right here because you can still see there's an arch in this back from the way this female in John Boyega is standing, but she's laughing. She's not interested in the truth because she's part of the system of white supremacy. That's all what this is about. Arch in the back here for John Boyega because he's 100% female, not a man. 100% female, not a man in any way, shape, or form. There's an arch right here, as you can see. Let's go another picture. John Boyega again here, right here. There is an arch in that back. There's an arch in that back right here, as you can see. Even though he's covering it up with his elbows, but there is an arch, as you can see, how the body contours. All right? Some more pictures. John Boyega and the white hips start showing now. All right? See how white this is? No man can have this kind of white hips. Look at that. White hips. The Q angle is below the crutch. We'll have some more pictures to show you. And very short arms. Look at how short those arms are. No black male has this kind of short arms. We look at the secondary characteristics now because we're showing you the primary that you're looking at a female and not a man. Okay, let's go another picture of John Boyega. You can see the hourglass figure starts showing. Look at that. And he starts spreading from where? Underneath the elbow. This is where his waist is at. Because that's where his waist is at. Look at all this hourglass figure. All the way down, Q angle below the crutch. Because John Boyega is 100% female. Not a man in any way, shape, or form. Look at that. Hourglass figure. Q angle is right here. As you can tell right here, this is the Q angle. It's below the crutch. It's very acute. Because John Boyega is 100% female. A stooge of the Vatican, been sent to tell lies to Africans and everybody in general around the world. Okay, uh, I remember there was a story one time I was reading um, on a Ni Nigerian lady. Um, a Nigerian lady wanted to see John Boyega because you have to understand that, like I've said before, African communities, if an African sees another African somewhere else, okay. They're not going to act like, oh, um, you're a stranger. They welcome you. Africans are very welcoming. and They're one of the most welcoming people I've ever met. Very, very welcoming. 
they're going to treat you very, very nice. So this story that I read is that um, this lady, uh, she, because they, they, when, when an African sees another African, they think, oh, he's one of them. They tried to get in contact with John Boyega and they were stopped. Why? Were they stopped? They told them that John Boyega is a security detail or something, did that and that. It's because they're trying to hide the fact that this is not a true man. But this is a woman, as you can tell by this face. This is the face of a female. This is no man. This is a face of a, a, a female who's been fed testosterone and everything else and is raised by the Vatican to feed, lie to Africans in general. This is not a man in any way, shape, or form. All right, so more pictures of John Boyega. And here's John Boyega's fake family. Who knows where they're manufactured because these are the parents. These are the so-called parents of John Boyega. If you look at these faces, this is the mom, this is the dad. None of them look like John Boyega. If this is her, John Boyega's sister and brother and sister right here, none of them look like this fella down here. None. There's no resemblance in any way, shape, or form. To the parents, they don't look a quarter like John Boyega because it's a fabrication. These are all paid lying deceivers to sell, the, sell to us the idea that you're looking at a man right here when it's not one. It's a straight up female. All right, so more pictures of John Boyega. Look at that. Is that a woman? Look at that. See, this is what I'm trying to tell you so you guys can see clearly. His elbows are around his body and he starts getting wider like a female. Look at that. Let me blow this up because it's a blurry picture. But I want you guys to notice that and see that very well. See, starts getting wider from underneath the elbows. And this is not straight. See, it starts slanting outwards, slanting outwards because John Boyega is female. It starts spreading wider from underneath the elbows instead of being a straight up torso. He was 100% female. It's not a man in any shape or way, way or form. 100% female. Spreading from underneath the elbows like a woman does. All right. Another picture of John Boyega. And look at that. Always in this stance with the feet wide apart because he's trying to hide the wide hips that she has. Trying to hide the wide hips because you can see how the body just starts getting wider from underneath the elbows. Trying to hide it because he's female. He's not a man in any way, shape or form. Another picture of John. Look at that. Look, look at this again. Can you see that? See that? Hourglass figure spreading wider. And now he's leaning and uh, hunching over forward trying to give you the appearance that he has very long arms. Something that people like Floyd, Joy, Money, Mayweather do. They hunch forward, all right, so that it looks like the arms are longer. And they droop the shoulders trying to give you the appearance that they have the long arms of a black male. But you can see the hourglass figure of, as it starts spreading wider right here because you're looking at a 100% woman. Tom Boyega is not a man. All right, another picture. John Boyega, as you start seeing now how the hips start showing. And in this picture, it becomes blurry all of a sudden. Why? Because you're looking at two females. He has the same Q angle here with the female on the right. Look at that, how wide this Q angle, or how acute it is from below the crotch because it's 100% female. The same Q angle with the female to the right because John Boyega is female. Look at how thick he spreads from the elbows down and gets wider this picture is blurry i know that but you guys can still see that see that how wide he gets in the q angle is acute below the crutch because it's 100 percent female just like the female on his right john boyega a stooge of the vatican 100 percent female not a man in any way shape or form here is here is john boyega walking and you can still see this q angle right here huge humongous hips below the crutch this is no man Look at this. Q angle below the crutch. John Boyega. 100% female. Not a man in any way, shape, or form. Been lying and deceiving us that he's one. All right. Here's John Boyega again. The Q angle still shows you that you're looking at. Look at the thick thighs and the roundness of those thighs. Hourglass figure. Because John Boyega is female. A cute Q angle below the crutch. 100% female. Look at that face. That's what they call like so many people call so many people uh, would say a butch homosexual looks like. This is what John Boyega is. 
Look at that face. That's not the face of no man. A black male? An African male for that matter? All right. Some more pictures. There's an arch in this back right here. Arch in the back. Being lying, lying to us that he's, he's a man when he's not. He's a straight up woman. Look at that. If you, can, you can tell by the thighs. The pencil thighs that females usually have in which the upper thigh is very thick and it gets closer to the, knee, to the knees. It starts getting smaller in some sort of pencil shape. That's what John Boyega has right here. 100% female. Not a man in any way, shape or form. Let's go. Another picture of John Boyega. You can see there's an arch in that back right here. Arch in the back. Arch in the back. Because he's 100% female. Been lying to us that he's a man when he's not. John Boyega again. Look at those wide hips. Can you start seeing now? You see very clearly now. Look at this. The Q angle below the crutch. Wide hips. Very thick in the middle. Because this is a woman. It's not a man. No man gets this thick in the middle. A black male for that matter? Look at that. 100% female. White stand is to hide the hips. So you don't see that acute Q angle. But it's a female all the same. John Boyega. 100% female. Here's John Boyega again. As you can see, the Q angle doesn't lie. It's below. Look at how thick this thigh is. Look at how thick the thigh is. Look at that. And this is the angle of how the thighs of a female with thick thighs are joined together. This is not this is no woman, this is no man in any way, shape, or form. John Boyega, 100 percent so thick in the middle because it's a woman. 100 percent female. And here's John Boyega with another stooge in David or Yellow Wool. Stooge and stooge together. Because they're both uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, birds of the same feather. If this guy was interested in telling you the truth, he would have told you that John Boyega is a woman and not a man. But he's never ever mentioned it. But he has the guts up to say, uh, get up when he's acting uh, uh, the movie on Selma, uh, Selma by Martin Luther. He was trying to lie to a lot of people that Martin Luther uh, was in the spirit when he spoke those words. So we can believe in the fabricated agents which the white supremacists show to us every day as the leaders of the black communities around the world. And one of them is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther was a straight up Mason. He's an agent of the Vatican, but regardless, he did give us some truth. This devious people here have not done any. The worst sort of traitors in the world today are the so-called black leaders in our communities. So-called black leaders in all the communities around the world. They're all liars. They're the worst deceivers of all time. Worst deceivers of all time. Let's go. Another picture. John Boyega, as you can see here, arch in the back, clear as night and day. The arch of a female. Arch of a female. Arch in the back. And, and this magazine is, is littered with, uh, you know, uh, it's littered with the Vatican code of numbers and Vatican symbology. Huh? See, John Boyega on blasting body fat. Who has body fat? Isn't it female who have body fat? And he's blasting body fat. They're giving you symbology that you're looking at a female. And look at this arrow. The arrow is painted pink. They're lying to us every day. The arrow is painted pink to show you that this is a woman. This is a straight up woman. It's not a man in any way, shape or form. Straight up female. So John Boyega's uh, this magazine covers men's health. They're featuring a woman on Men's Health magazine. What the hell is happening? This is all because John Boyega right here is a stooge of the Vatican. As you can see this page here says page uh, 64 right here has the uh, pink arrow. says John Boyega on lasting body fat. And all this is trying to show you that John Boyega right here is, is a woman. Is not a man in any way, shape or form. Alright, let's move on to the next picture of John Boyega right away. And here's another picture of Boyega. As you can see that's a woman sitting right there with the very ridiculous... Uh, you know, curvy hips. This is not the hips of a man in any way, shape, or form. This is the face of a woman, an African stooge for the Vatican. All right, another uh, picture of John Boyega right here. 
and I just want you to notice that this is a woman sitting because you can tell by the arms it's very short it's not as long as it should be for a black male's arms especially an African for that matter another picture of John Boyega again I think we already showed you this picture now let's move on to the next one Here's John Boyega walking. As you can see, they're always trying to, you know, hide the hips. So they always teach him every time you're out in public, make sure you put your hands in your pockets so you can hide this ri ridiculously humongous looking hips of a female, which John Boyega has because he's 100% female, not a man. You can tell by the acute Q angle here that you're looking at a female. And that is even a female walk. That's not a man walking. All right. Okay. Another picture of John Boyega right here. And look at this from the back, like we said. The Q angle is very, very acute because John Boyega is 100% female, a transgender, a African, a African stooge of the Vatican, used to control the minds of African and, and make them believe in the falsification of success that the albino supremacist has made us to believe in. Look at that curvy hips. Look at how curvy. Are those the hips of a man? Look at that hourglass figure. So curvy. Look at that. Just take a look. John Boyega, 100% female, and that's a woman right there. That is a woman trying to be a man, 100% female. All right, here is it again. Look at John Boyega, those hips again, those Q angles below the crutch. Look at those wide hips, very thick and wide in the middle, because John Boyega is 100, 100% female. Um, I want to give a special thanks out to somebody who brought this to attention and let me um, call out the name of the person correctly. Let me give you the name of that particular person who's a subscriber to our channel. He's been doing some great stuff. He's been looking into his world and finding out so many things. So I want to thank him especially for this video as well. Uh, subscriber's name is Chris. Chris, you know who you are. I just want to thank you for bringing this to attention because uh, Chris and one other person brought this to attention are the first time we just uh, thought we found a very ridiculous like video that was it looks like John Boyega who was actually I think the video was fabricated it wasn't John Boyega in any way and we thought that John Boyega was the was a, a male based on that video but when we looked at the more pictures that Chris brought to attention we the evidence was just stacking up picture after picture that we've been looking at a female all along so I want to thank Chris for this for bringing this to attention and another subscriber whose name I forget at this point in time but you know who you are all right so another picture of John Boyega right here you can see this is a woman's stand this is ridiculous I, I don't know how people I don't know how we even believe that this could be a man in any way. Just take a look at this. This is a woman standing right there. You can tell. And then the, the trick there is to slouch forward and, and slouch the shoulders forward and make it look longer like it's a male when it's not something like uh, we've already said that uh, Floyd Mayweather does a lot to try to sell to us the illusion that he's male when he's actually female. The same thing that John Boyega right here is doing because he's 100% woman. That's a woman standing right there. You can tell from this Q angle that is below the crutch and how acute it is and the space in between the thighs is ridiculous too much and he's so thick, thick in the pelvic region because he's 100% female and not a man in any way, shape or form. So if you're an African, you've been deceived for so long. If you're Nigerian and you think this is somebody you should be looking up to, we are here to tell you that you've been looking up to the very wrong person. This person does not represent you in any way, shape or form. This person represents the Vatican, the albino Vatican, the stooge of the Vatican that is used to decimate the African population, to whitewash and brainwash their thinking in, into believing that everything good happens to be white and everything bad happens to be black. They've been fed this lies for so long that nothing good. I mean. Africans in general believe that there are nothing that they can even be compared or be mentioned in the same statement with somebody who's an albino, which they give birth to all the time and they see in their own country. But they've been so brainwashed because of the myths uh, of whiteness um, and such lies as, you know, uh, uh, Neanderthal genes and sunlight issues and that. I mean, it's ridiculous the number of lies that we've been told about the origins of the so-called people who have straight hair today. They came from Africa, and we show that in our book. So when you get the book, you get the full understanding of that. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, here's another picture of John Boyega, as you can see right there, spreading from underneath the elbows, getting wider, 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 and it tapers right around here from where his Q angle or her Q angle starts, which is below the crotch which is below the crutch as you can see right here 
he gets wider from underneath the elbows this is no man getting spreading wider 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 until he gets to below the crotch weight ends where the q angle is because john boyega is 100 percent female that's why he was always a weird looking male right from the get-go it's just like when you watch the first time um, i watched a movie with angela bassett it's a very old movie i think it was called is it waiting to excel or so uh, the first time i watched it that's the very first time i took notice of uh, angela bassett because i used to like uh uh, Whitney Houston so when I watched the movie oh Whitney Houston is now an actress and I watched it I'm like that's a man right there but the public told us and the media which is owned by the Vatican told us it was a female so we all believed it was a female for so many long years until now all right let's go this is John Boyega again and that's the walk of a female leaning the weight into the leg that's in front of it because a women a woman or, or females in general have a wide pubic arch so because of that wide pubic arch the leg needs to do two things it needs to go forward and inwards at the same time to balance out the weight of the body causing the females to swing from side to side such that you see that female walk a uh, female walks with swaying her hips from side to side is because of balance they're trying to balance out the weight because of the wide pubic arch because the legs are doing the two things moving forwards and inwards at the same time and that's what john boyega is doing right here leaning the weight into this fit right here and walking like a female trying to tell us that he's a man stooge of the africa uh, of the vatican african an african stooge of the vatican that's what i meant to say this is john boyega again just take a look this is no man sitting down this this is a clear female there's nothing masculine about this person he doesn't have an out an atom or iota all right of of uh, let's say uh of masculinity in it it's all a woman female from head to toe very thick in the middle as all females usually are because he is a woman john boyega 100 percent female john boyega again trying to spread those uh, legs to hide the hips but the q angle doesn't lie because you can see from here from underneath the elbows that he gets wider and start getting thicker and from here the q angle starts which is below the crotch because she is 100 percent female not a man in any way shape or form a stooge of the vatican um one thing people always ask is um i think we've tried to answer that question in the book as well but we i'll just tell you right here some people get confused about how children look like parents of uh transgenders all right so that means the person is a transgender and has a child that looks like him or her and people wonder if they are actually not transgenders how come these children look like them the question is this it's very simple and i wonder how people never think about it plastic surgery that's what it is they send the children through plastic surgeons to make them look like their parents and when we also have the the sibling theory which you can look into in our channel is also in the primer video in which we give this the sibling theory of making you know transgenders look like their parents so here is john boyega again with his dad as we say and you can see that there is nothing similar there is no resemblance in any way shape or form that this is john boyega's dad just take a look there is nothing they don't look alike in any way shape or form it doesn't look like he has an iota of resemblance to this man right here whom he calls his father a fabrication of the vatican that's what it is and this man this so-called nigerian father, uh, pe person is in on it as well they are paid to do this so this is why i keep telling you that the worst traitors in this system of slavery that we're in by the albino supremacists in the vatican are caused and uh are caused and perpetrated by black people because they can't do all of this on their own it's the black leaders and black people who are making it possible that's just facts all right let's get into another picture of john boyega we had a couple where we've shown you that one show you this again hands in the pocket trying to hide the hips all right that's what they always do hands always in the pocket because you can see that he gets wider from underneath the elbows you can literally see that wider gets wider and wider and wider and tapers right around here which is the q angle below the crotch so in in order to hide those hips hands in the pocket but you can tell this is a female face right here as well 100 percent female not a man in any way shape or form 100% female. Look at how wide he starts getting from underneath the elbows, as all females do. Look at that. 
The clothes can't even hide it. Hands in pocket, trying to hide those female hips because he knows, she knows that she's a fabrication. But she doesn't know anything better because that's what the protocols of Zion were meant to do. Create servile slaves by making the children to have very confused and narrow mindsets when you mutilate a child. This is what's happening to John Boyega. All right. Another picture we already showed you that one. Here is a look, look, take a look at this. Just take a look. The Q angle is below the crotch. And look at how curvaceous the figure is because John Boyega is 100% female compared to the female that he's standing on to his side. 100% female, Q angle below the crotch. And see how thick those thighs are because those are the thighs of an African woman. Thick thighs, muscular looking thighs. 100% female, arch in the back. Look at that. Small, short arms. No African male can look this way with short arms. All African males have ridiculously long arms. Some of the longest arms in the world are from Africans. Longest limbs in the world are from Africans. Black people generally have long limbs, but when it comes to African, it is ridiculously long. Okay, let's go. Ajahn Boyega again, as you can see, this is a woman standing with the weight standing in the hourglass, so thick in the middle. Uh, this is where, when people, you know, a lot of people, there was a time there was, um, people were saying, oh, okay, um, uh, this is how the albino supremacists work. There were, when Star Wars came out, the very first uh, part of the, uh, when he started the reboot, uh, people were complaining that we have, uh, you know, um, a black person in the Star Wars movies. And they were trying to make us think that way because the people who perpetrate racism are the albino super supremacists in the Vatican, not anybody else. So they're trying to make it a racial issue that, you know, a fabricated racial issue that you have a black person in Star Wars and it's John Boyega and everything else. And a lot of people don't even know that the person that they think is actually uh, representing them has nothing to do with them at all has nothing at all to do with him. He's just a stooge of the Vatican. That's all what he is. Or what she is, rather. Okay, let's go another picture of John Boyega right here. Trying to lie to us that it's a female, but you can... Oh, sorry, that it's a male, but you can see right there, that's a woman right here. The dress or the, the, the clothes don't even fit right. Because it's a female, as you can see, it starts getting wider from underneath this elbows. All white, because that's where the clothes, What that's what the clothes will do. The clothes will conform to the body. Wide hips, wide pelvic region, starting high above, uh, uh, um, high above, or uh, the pelvic, the, pel the navel, sorry, I wanted to say the navel, high above the navel. That's where the female uh, um, pelvis starts. And that's what John Boyega has. As you can see, his navel is going to be right around here. Navel's right around here. can be here. Based on the length and torso of this body, it can be here. It's right around here. And this is where his waist starts, right above there. And that's why this clothes is getting wider from that point. Because John Boyega is 100% female, not a man in any way, shape, or form. We already showed you that picture. Here's John Boyega again. As you can see, there's an arch in that back. And they're trying to make us feel that he's someone very, very important. And Africans are looking up to him and say, oh, we finally have an African in Star Wars. Oh, yeah. You don't know that these people are busy laughing at you because who you think or what he is is not what he is. He's a representation of the albino supremacists and has nothing to do with black people. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing to do with Africans. Arch in the back. 100% female with a Q angle and thick thighs below the crotch because John Boyega is 100% female. and Not a man in any way, shape or form. John Boyega, again, you can still see there's an arch and a tilted pelvis right there from that clothing. And you know, generally... Uh, Africans and black people in general have such humongous butts, it's ridiculously difficult to hide. And this is what John Boyega can't hide because he's the butt of a female. Look at that tilt right there. That's a butt of a black woman. It's not the butt of a man. Butt of a black woman with humongous hips. You can see the tilt in the pelvis even with the way the clothes are hanging. You can see that it's tilted forward because John Boyega is 100% female, not a man in any way, shape or form. So when people are looking up to this and thinking, oh, we actually have an African in representation, because he does such a good acting of talking and trying to speak like a Nigerian when he's called upon just to sell the idea that he's from Nigeria. But he's an African. He's, he's not. He's actually an albino supremacist, a stooge of the Vatican. Look at that. Hourglass figure spreading from underneath the elbows. 100%. Look at that. Oh, what glass figure you're following my mouse? Q angle, acute Q angle below the crutch because it's 100% female. 100%. Not a man in any way, shape, or form. 
All right, John Boyega, you can still see the arch in the back. Arch in the back, Q angle is below the crotch and it's very acute because he is 100% female and not a man. Another picture, look at that again, as you can see, very thick in the middle like a woman. And this doesn't look like there is any scrotum in there. That looks like that's a tilted pelvis and I'm very sure that's a labia. You can tell by the thighs, the thighs, the thighs of a, a, a male usually, they come down, they join, the thighs join longer below, not this farther up, longer below all the way down around about here. That's where the thighs of a man is going to get joined at because he has a very narrow PBR. So the space in between the thighs starts farther down below, not up here like this like you see with this female as you can see the Q angle is right here below the crotch this is it right here see that see how cute it is below the crotch it's below see this is where his hips curvaceous figure hips and the hips ends right here the pelvic region starts all the way up the hips end right here and that's where the Q angle starts below the crotch because John Boyega is 100% female a stooge of the Vatican being impressed upon Africans as one of theirs when he's not all right Let's go another picture and that's a woman right there you can tell from the way it's acting and this wide pubic arch underneath which we can't really see but you can tell from the way those thighs are spread that that's a woman 100 percent female look at how the roundness of those thighs because that is a woman all the way john boyer again as you can see this is i mean this is end of story at this point in time this picture is blurry because the vatican is trying to hide the hips if we didn't have to make a say or show you another picture rather this should just end the video right here because you're looking at a woman the Q angle is so wide look at this below the crotch and see how acute that is because John Boyega is 100% female look at that very acute Q angle below the crotch 100% female very thick in the waist spreading from underneath the elbows wider and it terminates here which is below the crotch and see how acute that Q angle is because it's 100% female John Boyega, 100% female, not a man in any way, shape, or form. Acute Q angle below the crotch. All right, uh, let's go back to women. Uh, this is what the parents I was trying to show you that they have no resemblance to this so called son of theirs. They did not give birth to this person. They just, they've been paid money or part of the system. They could be their agents or something to sell the belief that this guy happened organically. So Nigerians and Africans in general can accept him or her as one of theirs. That's all what it is. A pure joke. This has no resemblance to either of these parents because John Boyega is not one of them. He's not, he's not a child born by either of them. It's just a fabricated fabrication from the Vatican. All right. This is John Boyega again. You can see there's an arch in this back right here. Arch in the back. Arch in the back. Let me blow this up so you guys can see very clearly that this person is not a woman, us is not a man, sorry, in any way, shape, or form. Arch in the back. You can see that right there. Arch in the back. 100% female, not a man. John Boyega. A liar, a stooge of the Vatican. Uh, that's John Boyega on the set of Star Wars. Uh, we, we don't know what this who this person is to the left, if she's a man or she's a woman. We don't, but we just assume that she's female for now. But we just wanted to show you the hourglass figure of this fella. Uh, this is a, a kind of GIF uh, picture, so it's moving all the time, but you can still tell there's an hourglass figure starting way up, higher up there, because John Boyega is 100% female. It's not a man in any way, shape, or form. All right, another picture of John Boyega still on the Star Wars set. There's an arch in the back line. So this is why he looks so weird. Because I always wonder, why does he look so weird? Why does he look so weird? It's a female. Just like the first time I saw Floyd Money Mayweather. I was like, that's a weird looking man. I was always wondering, something is off with this dude. What is it? I could never ever tell. What is it that I'm missing? Then when, I, when we started to put the, the whole puzzle together, we found out, oh wow, that's why it's weird looking. It's a freaking female. Freaking female. Just like John Boyega as well. Look at that. Q angle. Very acute. Below the crotch. Look at that. How acute that Q angle is. Look at that. Cute angle. Thick thighs of an African female, a black woman. Look at that. Cute, cute Q angle below the crotch. Sold to us like a male. Cute Q angle. Hourglass figure. 100% female. John Boyega. Look at that again. Look at that cute, acute Q angle again. 
uh, very very acute below the crotch gets wider from underneath the elbow see that wider 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 and it terminates right here below the crotch and the acute q angle because john boyega is 100 percent female not a man in any way shape or form a liar and a stooge of the uh, of the vatican used to influence africans okay Let's go again, John. But this is clear as night and day. So this woman in the Star Wars movie is actually a female because we can tell that she has an acute Q angle below the crotch. And so does John Boyega as well. Look at that. Below the crotch, acute Q angle. Wide stance trying to hide the hips. But it's there, acute Q angle below the crotch. You can see that. Below the crotch. 100% female. 100% female. Trying to act like a man and tell, telling us a lie that he's one when he's not. 100% female. Let's go another picture right here. Still trying to hide the hips, but the cute Q angle is below the crotch because it's 100% female. John Boyega, 100% female on testosterone with some facial hair, used to lie to us that it's a male when it's not. Another picture of John Boyega, as you can see, there's an arch in that back, and that bum is the bum of a woman, just like this one. You can see how it's slanting downwards because a female's bum is going to slant downwards towards the hips. Which is going to be the center of the of the bum and that's what john boyega has here centered slanting all the way down and the hips is right around here right around there because john boyega is 100 percent female and not a man in any way shape or form all right john boyega again again as you can see that's why you can't trust any of your celebrities they all work for the vatican because if this guy was trying to tell us the truth that he's really working for the public he should have told us this is a woman I've been in a Star Wars movie acting with this female who pretends that she is not one. Look at this. Acute Q angle below the crotch. See that? See the difference? It's the difference between male and female. Curvy hips, curvy thighs below the crotch. Acute Q angle below the crotch. Because John Boyega is 100% female. A stooge of the Vatican. He used to tell us a lie that he's working for Africans. That he has them in or that it used to tell us a lie that the albino supremacists all of a sudden love africa which they degrade every time they get a chance on tv a lot of people you guys should actually take a trip to africa to see what it's like if it's like what the tvs really show you because what they do is always show you like the villages and the uh let's say the countryside of africa which every nation has because when when they show Africa on TV, they don't show you the downtown section of Africa. They show you the villages. The same thing when they do when they show you uh, pictures of the Western world. They show you the downtown areas. They don't show you the county, which is all mixed up the countryside, which is the same as the villages in Africa. Same. They don't show you that. They show you Los Angeles. They'll show you Beverly Hills. They'll show you maybe downtown Washington, D.C. They'll show you maybe downtown Houston or Dallas and all those fine places. But they never show you the downtown countryside for you to see what it's like. So a lot of people, when they're looking at pictures of the United States of America outside of the United States on CNN or any of the media, all what they see is the downtown section. They don't see the countryside that's downtrodden in which it's ridiculously not looking as so nice like the downtown sections so when people call, when people have a view of the united states of america all they think about is the skyscrapers and the downtown section of uh the, uh, the western world that's but in the opposite they do the opposite for africans they just show you the villages and the communities. They don't show you the downtown section because they always want you to have the mentality that africans are broke poor and needy they are living in the jungle they have no history they are just pure animals because that's what they want you to believe about africans such a sad sad world so when people see uh john boyega like this in a star wars movie they actually think oh finally we are being represented correctly just like they made them foolishly a lot of let me not use the word before a lot of people were so brainwashed to go watch the black panther movie and actually think that the movie has finally uh you know the the black person is now getting some sort of you know a respite we're being portrayed nicely and they made so much fanfare about it not knowing that it's a ridiculous movie actually dissing you guys that's why we call this black panther one because we're gonna come out with the black panther two when the DVD comes out so we can show you in detail what you guys were not looking at. 
or what you guys were not seeing. But here John Boyega is 100% female and not a man in any way, shape or form. So if you've been thinking that John Boyega represents you, I'm sorry. He represents the Vatican. Okay, I think that was the last picture uh, that we had on this particular video and I hope you guys learned something. Uh, this particular video was uh, dedicated especially to Africans and that's why we call it John Boyega, uh, the African Special Edition. Uh, we had to tell you the truth so you guys should know that our history is all tied down to the African languages and history which the so-called albino supremacists are hard at work trying to rewrite history. Um, a lot of the stuff that you hear happening in the news in countries like Niger, Nigeria, Mali, and uh, which other country, the Cameroon right there, is there for a particular reason. And in a book, we explain why those guys are down there and why a lot of news is coming out from that spot. These people, the albino supremacists in the Vatican who work for the devil themselves are trying to rewrite history. So Africans need to be aware. You need to be aware. If you find somebody who's coming down there in the name of good for you, you really have to ask to find out what he's up to. Because they have so many agents and different kind of agents. They send missionaries. They send a lot of, because they're always portraying Africans as needing something or needing help. So Africans will always accept a lot of these agents into their countries thinking they're coming to provide help for them when they're there for some nefarious reason that has nothing to do with helping you guys. So you guys need to be aware. So download this video, send it to somebody else, make somebody else watch it, make your children watch it, and let your brains, all right, be open. Let your minds be open so you start seeing through the lies that we are being told every day. And so with that, we come to the end of this video. You subscribe to the channel if you're interested and spread the truth. So that everybody can come to the reality of who we are as a human race. And with that, I leave you with these words. Always look with your eyes, but always see with your brain. And I'll talk with you guys again. Thanks and see it.